Hello, welcome to my lecture. My name is Tata Lin. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of schizophrenia, sympathetic spectrum, and other psychotic disorders in this lecture. So let me start with the page from DSM-5. Schizophrenia, spectrum, and other psychotic disorders include schizophrenia, other psychotic disorders, and schizotypal personality disorder. The latter will be covered in a different lecture, which is the personality disorder. So when are we going to say that a person is psychotic? So the patient may have, must have one or more of the following five domain symptoms, which are delusions, hallucinations, disorganized thinking, which is reflected by his or her disorganized speech, and grossly disorganized or abnormal motor behavior, including catatonia and negative symptoms. So let me start with the first um, key features that define psychotic disorder, which is the delusion. Uh, what is delusion? Delusion is the, in summary, delusion is called a fixed false belief means that a patient is having a belief which is not true and which cannot be said uh, which cannot be shaken. Um, the different types of delusions are start with the prosecuty delusions, which is the most common form. And the, uh, the definition is that the belief that one is going to be harmed or harassed by an individual or organization or other group. And prosecuty delusion, a symbol is like this. So patient is believe uh, he, he or she is uh, believing that being spying on by someone who means harm or who is part of a conspiracy or being followed or tracked or being lying or given misinformation, being the victim of a plot or the harm is going to occur imminently. So that, that is the, these are the examples of prosecutory solutions. And the second type is the referential delusions, AKA the delusion of reference. So an example is that, oh no, not this one. An example is when someone watch a movie and believes that there is a message in this movie that is meant specifically for them. So that is called the idea of reference or delusions of reference. Another type of common delusion is grandiose delusions. When a person believes that he or she has an exceptional ability, wealth, or fame, or power, or such kind of uh, belief. So the example is that you may believe that you are a millionaire, multi-millionaire, while you are not, or you think that you believe that you found a cure for cancer, or are related to a Hollywood celebrity, which is not. So another type is, uh, which is rare compared to the former ones, but um, which is the erotomanic delusions. So when a patient believes falsely that another person is in, live, in love with him or her. So that is, uh, that kind of delusion is called the erotomanic delusions. Another rare form of delusion is nihilistic delusions. So these are the good example. So it is also uh, known as delusion of non-existence. The patient believes that he no longer exists or his mind or a part of his body is missing or the world itself can has ceased to be. So this is the, the other, these are the good examples of nihilistic delusions. And another type is somatic delusions. So the examples are like in, inside their body or inside their organ, and foreign bodies are there or certain parts of the bodies are missing or deformed. So these are the somatic delusions example. So delusions can be bizarre or maybe non-bizarre. So bizarre examples are mostly 
like um, they have the loss of control over their mind or they have been re uh, removed by the scene, um, you know, outside force, like thought withdrawal. Uh, thought withdrawal means that his or her thought is being withdrawn without, without their, you know, without their consent or without their will or such kind of belief. And another um, bizarre delusion form is like thought insertion. It's a reversal, reverse form of, uh, you know, the opposite of thought withdrawal is the patient is um, uh, believing that a thought is being inserted into his or her head or brain or like that. Or the delusion of control, like, that, like his or her action is being controlled. So these are the bizarre delusion. Another domain, um, key domain symptoms is hallucination. So hallucination is the false perceptions. So it means that the patient is having the sensation actually, um, you know, without external stimulus. So uh, there are different forms of um, hallucinations, but the auditory hallucinations are the most common in schizophrenia and its related disorders. So there are like auditory hallucination, visual hallucination, which is the seeing, uh, which is the patient is seeing the things that are not there. For auditory, the patient is hearing a voice which is not there. Uh, and tactile hallucination, which is a touch. And gustatory, which is the, about the taste. Or uh, olfactory hallucination, which is smelling something which is not there. So these are um, the forms of hallucination. Another two main examples is disorganized thinking which is reflected by his or her disorganized speech. So some examples include um, derailment or loose association, like the, in, uh, the individual switch from one topic to another. So this is a good example, like uh, a person with derailment thought disorder might jump from talking about rabbits to the hair on their head, then to your sweater. Another uh, disorganized thinking or disorganized speech example is tangentiality. So this is a good example. Um, when a patient is asked like, why did you get mad? Then he would answer like, I really got mad as I was waiting in line at the grocery store, I cannot, stand lines, waiting and waiting. I waited for a long time to get my driver's license. Driving these days just crazy. So he just touched the question only just once, like a tangent line. So this is a good example of tangentiality. And um, another disorganized thinking or speech example is incoherence or word salad. So let's see the example. The example is um, they are destroying too many cattle and wine just to make soap. If we need soap, you can jump into a pool of water and then when you go to buy your gasoline, my folks always thought they should get pop, but the best thing is to get is more at while and many. So here is you can see the incoherence, like nearly incomprehensible, you know, um, speech. So these are the examples of disorganized thinking or disorganized speech, which we can found in schizophrenia and other uh, related disorders. Another um, is uh, another domain symptom is grossly disorganized or abnormal model behavior. So it can range from like childlike silliness or maybe agitation. So uh, it also include the catatonic behavior, which is the marked decrease in reactivity to the environment. So which is a wide range from resistant to instruction, negativism. So the patient may not respond to anything to you, uh, anything to what he or she is asked to do. He, will, he or she will not react to any instruction. So negativism or maintaining a rigid, inappropriate, 
Bazaar Butcher. So you can find uh, you can find in Google like the Kadatoni Butcher. Then you will find the rigid inappropriate uh, butcher. They are maintaining that for a long, uh, you know, for maybe hours. So and to uh, complete lack of pave or moderate responses, which is called mutism and stupor. Or it can be paradoxical excitement. So which is called the catatonic excitement, which is a purposeless, purposeless and excessive moral activity without obvious cause. So these are the um, examples of grossly disorganized. We can observe, um, you know, grossly their abnormal behavior. So the less domain symptoms is negative symptoms. So negative symptoms are uh, the two major negative symptoms are particularly prominent in schizophrenia, which is the diminished emotional expression and evolution. Diminished emotional expression is like just, you know, they are not going to express their emotions in their face or eye contact or uh, in notation of the speech or movements of the hand or head or face. And evolution is decrease in motivation to do the bubble store activity. Okay, so another um, other negative symptoms are elogia and idonia is sociality. Elogia is diminished speech output, means that the patient is not going to speak. And, and, and idonia is the decreased ability to experience pleasure from the positive stimuli or degradation in the recollection of pleasure previously experienced. Um, and asociality is the patient is not going to participate in or lack of showing lack of interest in social interaction. So I have discussed about the five domain symptoms to diagnose psychosis. So now I am going to talked about the comparison between the psychotic disorders. This is the table from uh, the website called PsychDB, which uh, stands for Psychiatry Database. So a website developed by the Canadian psychiatrist, which, is, which I found is very helpful. So I have this table to differentiate between different psychotic disorders. So let me start with the brief psychotic disorders. For brief psychotic disorders, the patient has psychotic symptoms for more than one day, but not more than one month. So the patient has the psychotic symptoms and it, and it resolves less than or within one month. And the symptoms is at least one of the out of the following four domain symptoms, which are delusion, hallucination, disorganized speech, disorganized, uh, grossly disorganized or catatonic behavior, at least one out of four, and duration is less than one month. And passionate declination is none after one month, okay? So when the symptom is clear and then the patients can go back to his normal fashion, fashion in life. So this is called brief psychotic disorder. And schizophreniform disorder is diagnosed when their symptoms, psychotic symptoms are occurring more than one month, but more than, not more than six months. So the symptom resolves within one, uh, six months uh, after having the symptoms. And the symptoms have uh, are the at least two of two out of the five domain symptoms that we have discussed already. And fashion and declination is not required. Another um, big topic is schizophrenia, which is in which a patient must have the psychotic symptoms for more than six months. The symptoms are the same as schizophrenia form disorder, which is at least two out of the five. Delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, or grossly disorganized or catatonic behavior or negative symptoms. And here in schizophrenia, patients have 
defense and declaration in either social economic or education or you know in one of his or her fashion domains and um, after that we will go to schizoaffective disorder which is uh, which is quite um, challenging in terms of that it must be differentiated from another similar disorder that we have, which is the mood disorder with psychotic symptoms. That will be a cover in another lecture for mood disorder in major depression, major depressive disorder, and bipolar disorder. Here in psychotic disorder, we have schizoaffective disorder, which is defined as we have the patient have major mood episode, either depressive, major depression, or manic episode, plus two weeks of isolated psychotic symptoms. Isolated psychotic symptom means the patient has the hallucinations or delusions occurring in the absence of major mood disorder for more than or two weeks. And there are patient is having you know his or uh, the majority of his uh, illness time cause is predominant by mood symptoms. So here in schizoaffective disorder, we have mood symptoms. Uh, the patient is having mood symptoms in combination with uh, psychotic symptoms, but the psychotic symptoms must occur in the absence of mood disorder for at least two weeks. And the other form of psychotic disorder, we don't have mood, mood symptoms, okay? And functional declination is not really required. And delusional disorder, the last thing. So delusional disorder is somewhat different. So at its name, given its name, the patient has only delusion, no hallucination, no disorganized speech or disorganized behavior or negative symptoms, no other psychotic symptoms, only and only delusion, maybe one or more delusions. And the patient maintain normal function aside the impact of delusions. A good example uh, from the US Amali question is like the patient is a driver. He believes that um, the alliance are um, very, you know, the alliance very uh, some material, some, some a mysterious chemical in his backyard. The patient believes it and he may dig um, you know, his backyard. But on the other time, the patient, the patient is totally fine, it means that the patient, is, the patient can maintain his job, he can drive, he can do, um, you know, he can maintain his uh, fashion apart from this false belief solution. And um, you know, when we see the psychosis and psychotic disorder, we have a very, very, very um, you know, broad um, category in which psychosis complicated by medical illness, psychosis secondary to medical illness, psychosis secondary to substance abuse disorders, substance induced psychosis. So when we see the the um, psychotic disorder that we have listed here in the table, we must first exclude the other medical conditions that can result in psychosis or psychotic symptoms. And we must first exclude the substance abuse disorders that can result in psychosis or psychotic symptoms. Only after excluding those uh, conditions, we can diagnose the following um, disorder listed here. Okay, now we have learned how to diagnose psychosis, how to differentiate among psychotic disorders based on their symptoms and their duration or the length of the symptoms. So now how do we treat? Obviously, we have antipsychotics, which are the mainstay of the treatment for psychosis. So we have typical antipsychotics, AKA first generation 
antipsychotics, and we have atypical antipsychotics, also called second generation antipsychotics. Okay, so atypical psychotic have uh, haloperidol, fumoside, and a lot of antipsychotics which are ending with zinc, prime fluoropyrazine, fluphenazine, theoretazine, fluvromazine. Mainly act by blocking the dopamine D2 receptor. So they have uh, high potency and low potency antipsychotics. So high potency include haloperidol, trifluoparacine, and fluphenazine. So I memorize is like trying to fly high. So trifluoparacine fluoxanacin and haloperidol. That's it. And in high potency antipsychotic, they have more neurologic side effects, which is the extra side effects that we are going to discuss later. And the low potency, typical antipsychotics include propromazine, thioridazine. They have more anticholinergic, antihistamine and FR blocking effects. So, and the anticholinergic side effect means like the patient have the dry mouth and she, he or she feels hot or, you know, they have um, drowsiness or like that. Antihistamine, drowsiness, FR blocking effect means that they have the voluntary hypotension or blood pressure abnormality. Okay, regarding the adverse effect, I wanted to highlight about the endocrine side effect. So dopamine has its special effect in brulatine secretion. Dopamine blocks the secretion of brulatine from the anterior pituitary, right? So when a dopamine receptor is blocked by an antipsychotics, then hyperprolatinia occurs, which results in the symptoms of glatoria, oligomenorrhea and gynecomasia. And there are also metabolic um, side effects, dyslipidemia, weight gain, and hyperglycemia. But these metabolic uh, side effects are more pronounced in second generation antipsychotics, okay? And the anti-mascarinia side effect, antihistamine side effect, and fr blockage effect that I have discussed already. Mm, and the cardiac, especially the haloperidol and high potency antipsychotic, right? And they have, they have the QD prolongation side effect. And ophthalmologic, the special, the specific side effects, uh, the specific drug that cause ophthalmologic side effect, uh, which is the gonadotropin, is caused by clopromazine. And theoridazine. Theoridazine cause specifically called the retinal deposit. Okay. And um, now we come extra perimeter side effect. Uh, before going to extra perimeter side effect, there is also a big topic here, which is neuroleptic malignancy syndrome. Okay, so I will discuss more about that during the discussion. And for extrapyramidal side effect, we have um, acute dystonia, and we have ecadesia, we have Parkinsonism, and we have thyroid dyskinesia. So these are called the extrapyramidal side effects because dopamine, dopamine have four pathways, right? So it also, one of the pathway is extrapyramidal tract. So dopamine plays a role in extrapyramidal tract. So we have the extra, when dopamine is blocked, we have any, uh, the extrapyramidal side effects. Acute dystonia means that the patient is having the muscle uh, spasm, stiff neck, oculogyris crisis, uh, in which the eyelids roll over the, um, you know, roll over and the, his head is tense and neck is tense or like that. And the treatment is we have to give the anticholinergic. 
to treat acute dystonia. So we give pantothenic and diphenhydramine. Why? Why? Because in extra tract, we have the balance dopamine and cholinergic um, acetylcholine. So when the dopamine is blocked, means that cholinergic component is higher. So we have to balance it. We have to balance it. So we need to suppress the choline, cho, uh, acetylcholine component, acetylcholine, you know, weightage. So benzodiazepine, diphenhydramine, they act by blocking the um, cholinergic receptor, so anticholinergic. Okay. So after starting the antipsychotics for day to months later, the patient may have a gabagia, means that psychomotor restlessness, and we treat it by beta blocker, pantothenic, and benzodiazepine. Three B. We can memorize by three B. Beta blocker, pantothenic, and benzodiazepine, and for Parkinsonism. So we call it drug induced Parkinsonism. Before we call it pseudo Parkinsonism or like that. So, uh, like Parkinsonism have they have the three key feature, which is bradykinesia, rigidity, and tremor. We treat by giving benzodiazepine and a cholinergic and imantadine, which is the anti Parkinsonism drug. Okay, and months to years later. After starting the antipsychotic, the patient may experience star type dyskinesia, which is the um, you know, involuntary movement like chorea, involuntary movement of the hands and feet, and especially the oral fascia, the you know, uh, involuntary vision of uh, the muscles, muscle of the face. The treatment is atypical antipsychotics, specifically close up and we can also give the uh, medications like velbenazine, uh, judetrabenazine, so which act by decreasing the dopamine release. Now we are going to atypical antipsychotics, which includes a resbibrazole. And so basically, it contains imomorizes into like bin group and zone group. Okay, so bin groups include here acinapine, clozapine, olanzapine, quetiapine, uh, iluberi, uh, this is the dome group, sorry, iluberidome, paliperidome, risperidome, duracidome, fibracidome. So basically, we have bin group and dome group plus. A ERP brothel. Okay, these are atypical antipsychotics. So the mechanism for atypical antipsychotic is not completely understood, and they are just, they are you know being steady and more and more results are being found. So they have uh, serotonin receptor five T two receptor antagonist effect. They have the T two receptor antagonist effect. And for ERB brazo particularly, it has the two pashe agonist effect. And they also have the very effects on F4 and um, H1 receptor. So they have um, the clinical use is the same as the first generation antipsychotic or typical, typical antipsychotic, which is on the um, you know, schizophrenia and psychotic spectrum disorders. So the thing is that atypical antipsychotics, they are, they can, you know, they are quite effective for both positive and negative symptoms. Whereas typical is uh, typical antipsychotic, uh, you know, are effective mostly for positive symptoms. So every antipsychotic can be used in bipolar disorder to for uh, the you know most stabilizing effect. And there are also many other um, disorders, psychiatric disorder that can be that can be used. So clozapine, clozapine is particularly used in treatment resistant schizophrenia or schizo treatment resistant schizoaffective disorder, or and suicidality in schizophrenia, 
and plus um, for tarak dyskinesia that I mentioned above. And for its adverse effects, so we have the both fins and dog group, right? So we can differentiate into like fin groups are low potency antipsychotics and then the atypical antipsychotics. And the don't group are high potency antipsychotics among the atypical antipsychotics, okay? Mostly risperidol, it has high barbrolactinemia side effects and extrapyramidal side effects. Whereas fin groups have more likely to have the metabolic syndrome, metabolic side effects. So olanzapine, guidiabine, they have weight gain, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. That's why we need to check the patient's body weight, sugar level, and metabolic profile, including the lipid profile, before starting the medication as a baseline, as well as up periodically after starting the medication. And they have um, one of them, clozapine, is very different, which has a very dangerous side effect, very serious. Rare but severe side effect is agranulocytosis, which is severe, so we need to monitor the WC count periodically. And also seizure, because it has the, it reduces the seizure threshold, okay? Okay, and also it has, uh, the atypical psychosis also have the prolonged QT, uh, means that, you know, it has effects on heart. But it has, Compared to typical antipsychotic, atypical psycho antipsychotics have fewer extrapyramidal side effects and anticholinergic side effects. Okay, this is uh, the end of my a brief overview of psychosis and uh, the psychotic disorders and its treatment. Okay, so thank you for your attention and I am happy to answer any questions that you might have during the discussion. Okay, see you there.